Hey guys, welcome back to Age of Empires 1 and we are actually on what I'm pretty sure is the final mission. You can see here we've actually got a bit of a scroll bar to see, well, the last mission here. Siege in Canaan in the Ascent of Egypt learning campaign. And I'm gonna be clear here, I have actually tried this mission a little bit beforehand because, um, well, the first time I tried to do this, well, I got immediately destroyed. Now, let's go through the intro first and I'll show you what it's all about. So let's jump into the Siege of Canaan, 1450 BC. Our glorious new monument to the Pharaoh is the envy of everyone and marks Egypt as the greatest civilization in the world. With this major project completed, the Pharaoh wishes to turn his attention to the Canaanites, uh, Canaanites? who have been a thorn in the side of Egypt for generations. They have foolishly resisted becoming part of Greater Egypt for too long. You are to take the largest city under siege and destroy their government center. This assault is intended to bring them to heel. The smaller Canaanite cities must surrender to you once their mightiest citadel has fallen. So we just have to destroy one building, basically, in this one. Let's check the history. Looking back on the history of Egypt, we can discern three long-term foreign policy goals. A stable Nubian frontier to the south, freedom from piracy and, in, and invasion from Libya, and control of the Levant to Syria and beyond. While Nubia and Libya were more irritants than sources of potential profit, the eastern Mediterranean coast over there was an opportunity for real empire building. The cities of Canaan were the nexus of important trade routes between Egypt to the south, Mesopotamia to the east, the Hittites to the north, and the Minoans and Greeks to the west. Despite a relative paucity of natural resources and farmland, the Canaanite cities prospered due to their position in the middle. At one time or another, however, the central hub of Canaan was coveted by the bigger empires on the rim of the trading wheel that revolved around the center. So basically the trade went like that. And we're sort of in the southwest. Around 1450 BC, Egypt had benefited by the rule of several strong pharaohs in succession and held control of the southern Levant, modern Israel, and the Sinai. Attempting to extend that control northward, the Egyptians encountered the two other superpowers of the area, the Hittites and the Mitanni. The Mitanni controlled what is today eastern Syria and western Iraq, but were short-lived as a power and are little remembered now. The independent cities of the Levant, including Canaan, were caught in the middle. They had to choose an alliance with one power or risk alien alienating all three. Alright, so you can see that we've sort of moved up to the northeast. Now let's check the hints here. Take the scenario one step at a time. First build up a productive city and strong fighting force in the area where you begin the game. Next advance the ridges to the northwest. Uh huh. There's secure gold and stone to the northwest. Clear the enemy from your side of the river, build up a powerful force of catapults and supporting units, destroy the enemy towers guarding the river and advance towards the north, and heal after we clear each obstacle. The enemy government center you need to destroy is in the north corner and is defended by walls, towers, and troops. Alright, so we're now gonna jump into the game and I'm gonna show you what it's all about. And so I'm not gonna MLG the start here. I'm just gonna show you the the main issue and I did a little bit of scouting So I'm gonna show you what this sort of a uh, Entails there's a bit of an AI Trick here uh, Going on so basically the enemy I'm gonna show you if I grab these guys and move them just slightly out We're immediately gonna run into someone and if we start attacking and they start taking damage let me just show you what's going to happen. And I'm going to send this guy up here. And importantly, there's a bit of forest over on this side. And you're going to see there's a lot of troops coming in. Like, and in like a lot. I mean, look at this. Overwhelming numbers. There's four more archers and there's that sentry tower right up there. So we can't even do proper combat down here. And you can see we get absolutely destroyed. And slightly northwest here, you will find the gold and some stone deposits. So, it seems like you can lose this mission pretty much immediately. But the trick is, as long as the enemy does not take any damage, they will not attack you. So we have an infinite amount of time to prep our base. So let me go ahead and restart this mission. 
Let's go ahead and restart. And we're gonna go like this. I'm gonna show you the the optimal build I've found so far. And I'm gonna bring my troops back. The first thing we're gonna do, as you can see the Kanan have changed stance to enemy, they're gonna be our enemies. Bring your troops back, set two villages onto the berries, and start making as many villages as possible until you get to 10 villagers. Because you might notice, there's no real source of food here. And this guy's gonna head straight over here and build a storage yard, just like that. Or well, a storage pit, rather. And we're just gonna make enough villages up until 10, and then we need to advance to the next age, because without a food source, well, we need to get to farms before these berries run out. And these, each of these berries has like 150 there. So we have quite a bit to, to go through. Uh, well, as in, we, we don't have a lot. I mean, we have very little, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so as long as we stay here and we don't engage the enemy, everything's gonna be A-OK. -okay. And you can start chopping a tree. Because once we get to the next age, we immediately transition into farm. So we're, we're gonna need some wood. But again, you know there's the enemies who are pretty much standing right there, so we can only chop this wood for so long before it actually breaks through. So that uh, the forest over to the northeast is where we're going to transition our woodcutters eventually, once this is chopped down a little bit. But basically, we can't move out until we get some Bronze Age units and hopefully a tower as well. But you can see we start with 200 stone, and 200 uh, gold, which is no accident. It's just enough to get things going. Now, how many villages do we have so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nines on the way. So I'm gonna get one more villager and the rest of the food is gonna go into, there we go. That's gonna be the 10th villager. And the rest of the food is gonna go into getting to the tool age. So I'm just gonna show you how everything is eventually sort of set up properly here. And eventually, you saw all those military units that came in to attack us in the when we actually engaged in combat. Well, we need enough to deal with all of that. But for now, to make sure this video isn't too long, I'm gonna skip ahead and show you... Well, we're just saving up 500 food here. So I'm gonna skip ahead until we have 500 food. All right, we're just about reaching 500 food here. We want to advance as soon as possible. And we, you can see we're on the last berry bush, which means we start transitioning people over to chopping wood. There we go. Going to the next age. And once these guys deposit food, you send them straight and go chop some wood. Because there's no point leaving them here. And it'll allow us to stockpile wood so that we can quickly set up farms once we get to the next age. Leave one guy to finish off that berry bush. And you can see sometimes the berry bush glitches out a bit. It's got 29 left and seven, I've got 70. So sometimes the berry bushes do glitch out a little bit and lose the food here and there. And losing one food actually matters in this case because as soon as we get to the next age, we want to upgrade our uh, clubmen to axemen. And actually, let's uh, send this guy down here. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. But to do that upgrade, it costs 100 food. But because this berry bush glitched out, we're only going to have 99 food. Anyway, since we're going for farms, we got to set up a granary. So I think uh, right there is a good part. Uh, because we, we want to surround it with farms, basically. And the rest of these guys are all on wood cutting. One guy to finish off that berry bush. And that should pretty much sync up to... Uh, there we go, you can see there's nine food left. Unfortunate that that sometimes happens. Uh, but uh, never mind, we'll be getting to the next age soon. And we gotta make sure these woodcutters do not get through that last line of trees, basically. Because we do want to, this to act as a wall. And here we go, granaries going down. So, as soon as we get to the next age, we're gonna build a market and build pretty much like four or five farms. And also, I did a little bit of testing to see how, how things actually work. I, I, 
in, in an earlier mission, uh, in the farming mission, I think, you could actually, you can set multiple people to work on a farm, but it doesn't actually harvest food faster. Anyway, first things first, let's build a market. And you go help out. Uh, yeah, like you can set multiple villages onto one bit of farmland, but it doesn't actually harvest the food faster. <laughs> I thought it did, but it doesn't. It's just an animation thing. And also, the market upgrades aren't just economical. It's something I didn't really read properly before, but let me show you once I set up these farms. I'm gonna set a farm there, a farm there, and a farm here. You move over a bit. You can actually have one right in the corner there. Now this, these farm upgrades, you can see at the plus two wood cutting, it actually increases missile weapon range. The stone mining increases the slinger attack range. So I, I, I didn't really understand that in missions before this. And actually we have some food now. Actually, no, let me cancel that. How did I get a, I have a hundred food. I guess it didn't glitch out. So let's upgrade our Axeman. And I'm gonna build one more farm here. So we got a few farms coming down and I'm gonna send this guy over this way to set up our second wood outpost because we're starting to get a little close to the edge here. So you head over there and we got four farms coming down. We need to make space for more farms. It's always good to have these guys a little bit spaced out like that. And there we go, we got our Axemen. We'll build a farm there. And we can build our second storage yard right over here. Where's the trees? There we go. Build the storage yard. The edge of the map is there. We'll build it right there. Once that's done, we'll transfer the woodcutters over. And actually, we can transfer them over now. It's gonna take them a while to actually walk over. Now remember, there's no rush because the enemy won't attack until we attack. We gotta make the first move. There we go. Nice five farms in the corner there. Safely tucked away. Uh, and we can of course build more farms around this side. Now food's coming up, so we can actually do some upgrades. And actually let's get the villagers going because we want to we need to boost our wood production and food production because we can't really do anything until we get to the next age anyway. All right, so from here on out, I'm just gonna set up my base and well, I'm gonna build an archery range and can we actually, I'm gonna research the watchtower and I want to build a watchtower right here next to my barracks because once the, the fight starts over here, was that? Oh, that was quick. We're gonna build a tower right here. Once the fighting starts around here, I want to have the tower for sort of support. It's gonna help a lot once the, the, the battle takes place. And then we'll also be able to go to the next age and we can upgrade the watchtower to a sentry tower. So it will actually have some proper use. And just about now, our, our population is sort of uh, maxing out. So you can build a couple houses here and there to, to deal with that. All right, so I'm gonna set up my base and collect enough food to get to the next age because nothing's really gonna happen. And we need, I think, 800 food to get to the next age. So we basically need more farms. So I'm gonna go ahead and start placing farms like that along here. There we go, got a house and we'll get a few more things. And also if, uh, I don't know, we might do these upgrades, maybe not. We, we could save the food to get to the next age. And when we're going to the next age, we'll do some uh, military upgrades. All right, so that seems good. And we're just gonna, yeah, okay. So I'll skip ahead here until we get closer to 800 food. And I'm just waiting for that tower to finish. All right, cool. And we'll build, we gotta move these guys around actually. You build there. And I'm gonna place a farm right here. And you are gonna place a farm 
right here. That allows you to walk? Yeah, okay. So you can see that's, that's quite efficient, and they're sort of trapped in here with a little entrance in case we need to bring people out, but it's fine. So that's gonna be lots of uh, farm, uh, farm hands. And also, just to prove the point about the farming thing, you can see here, two guys working on this farm right now. The amount of food they collect, this guy's now collecting, this guy's not going up at all. So it doesn't work. <laughs> but there we go, that's some food production. And we'll just uh, maybe get a couple more villagers to boost our wood production as we move into the next age. And then I'll save up 800 food to actually go to the next age. All right, so I'm gonna skip ahead here and we'll see how that works out. Okay, so we're at 800 food. Let's go ahead and advance to the Bronze Age. And now you can see I actually did one upgrade to, to before these farms ran out. I did the farming upgrade, which is uh, something that's quite important. But I also want to do this woodworking upgrade. And then I also want to start doing these and also start getting archers. Archers are going to be very important. But for now, we're getting some food in. So let's uh, do our armor upgrades. And we do have two storage pits. And I'm also, I want to get these first three upgrades, basically, and I don't want to spend any gold on these upgrades once we get to the Bronze Age. But here we go. More food should be coming in soon. Plenty of wood has come in, and it looks like it's going to be a lot, but these farms are about to run out, so rebuilding them is going to take uh, quite a bit. But let's go ahead and... Uh, ooh, these take 100 food each. All right, I'd like to get Archer Armor. Now, all right, that's one upgrade down. I could actually transition one guy over to like build a farm here or something. Ah, there we go. Enough for that. And I also want to get this. This is going to cost 100 as well. So just adding on one more farm here just to, to keep things, well, to balance things between the wood and the farms. The farm upgrade is going to be handy though. Ah, here we go. This is, oh, that's run out. Rebuild that. And get the that upgrade. Build that. Rebuild that. There we go. And I also want to get this because it's plus one missile weapon range. So that should increase the range of our towers and our archers, which is going to be very good. But that takes 120 food as well. And we're actually well on the way to the Bronze Age, but we definitely need more food. Alright, just keep the farms going. And we don't need to get the cavalry... Well, I'm not getting the cavalry upgrade because I don't personally... Uh, like the cavalry upgrade. I don't like cavalry, rather. So I'm not gonna get any of these because they all cost gold, and I don't want to waste the gold I start with on that. But one thing I do want, I'm gonna grab you, is I'm going to build a siege workshop. Right, uh, right here, I think. Yeah, that looks like a safe enough place to put it. I'm gonna build a siege workshop because that sentry tower over there, we need a catapult to deal with it. And this is called the Siege of Canaan, so... Uh, we need to have siege weapons. Alright, so we've got some armor and attack upgrades. I'm gonna get uh, two short swordsmen, and I'm gonna train more archers, lots of archers, because archers are gonna be very useful because of all the infantry running around. Archers also tend to distract the enemy quite quite well. There we go. We could also... We can upgrade our missile range even more, actually. But there we go, this uh, now has plus one range. They also have plus one range. That's all very good. This is a little expensive to get, though. These short swordsmen are gonna be handy, though. We do have a bit of gold, so we're gonna save that. And we have 50 more stone, which is for the sentry tower upgrade. Now, I would, I want them to all come to me down here and fight around my tower. All right, there we go. I'm gonna get, can I afford this? I'm gonna get one stone thrower. You go back to cutting wood. There's our two short swordsmen. And then we're just gonna grab a couple more axemen. 
Should I get this missile weapon range? 170 food, it's a little pricey. But uh, it, it's probably going to be quite useful. Also, this research the wheel. Villages move 30% faster. It's actually quite, quite good. Required for chariots. The tech tree in... Uh, actually, can I afford this? I can. Alright, get that upgrade. The tech tree in Age of Empires is not so apparent when you're just like looking at the buildings and looking at the upgrades. It's a bit hard to tell, honestly. But here we go. I'm okay with losing some of these units. But I need to keep this uh, stone thrower safe. So I'm gonna keep him somewhere to the back. I don't think the area of effect damages our own units. There we go. We can attack ground, but no. I'm gonna keep him back here. To be nice and safe. He's got 10 range though. So it could be handy. Oh, let's keep the farms going. Any more upgrades that we want to get? We're getting another range upgrade. Maybe a couple more archers and a couple more axemen. And then I think we'll be doing okay. This farm's about to run out. There we go. That one as well. So you can see the, the amount of wood we've collected, it's gone way down. I mean, these catapults are 180. The archers cost quite a bit as well. How's that pop? Population is... We could actually do with another house as well. Alright, we'll keep the axemen down here. We got a couple more military units on the way. And getting to the next age would be good, but it's not absolutely essential right now. Alright, I think that's, uh, that's good. We'll queue up a couple more axemen. You go back to cutting trees. And I think for the first time ever, I'm gonna save the game. Just in case. I don't want to mess this up. Alright, so now I'm gonna upgrade my tower to a sentry tower. And that upgrade is gonna increase the range and sight range of my watchtower. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna hit that clubman over there, which is gonna lure them all down this way. And then I don't have to command my units to do anything, really. I just have to wait for them to come to me and we'll all engage by ourselves. So two short swordsmen should do quite a bit of damage if they don't get pulled away too far. But here we go. Oh, that guy's not there. So let's go ahead and lure someone out. Where's the... where's the clubman? Oh, there's, there's one. Alright, here we go. Just gonna take one shot. No? He didn't take damage. He's gotta take damage. Okay, taking damage. Moving back. Alright, here they come. You can see they, they immediately start coming in. And now, the war starts. Now I don't think... Oh, we do take friendly fire from this thing. Okay, you, you just stay back there. Alright. Catapult stay back. The catapult can actually go ahead and target the tower. The rest of you come back this way. And we'll get some villagers on the back of this. And you can see we held up pretty nicely. We actually had more than we needed. Alright. And our catapult will take out the sentry tower. And... We're pretty much good to go. And our tower has a range of 8, which is pretty good. We actually massively outrange the enemy. <laughs> Alright. Now at this point, we can actually invest in 
a second stone thrower because we're definitely gonna need it. And that's that down. And our row of archers will pretty much stop anyone who comes round. Bring more villagers over here. I want a total of six villagers. Because I'm gonna build a storage yard over here for the stone and gold. So there's two more on the way. We'll need three more. All right, start mining the golden stone. And then we just have to build up our army and do upgrades, really. We got the second stone thrower on the way, yeah. All right, mine gold, mine stone. You mine gold, you mine stone. You're mining gold. Okay, and there's our second catapult. We need to keep these in reserve, but they do have pretty long range. So let's grab you, set them as control group one. Let's get rid of them. It is a bit of excess, but it's okay. And we're gonna stand ground there and spread out our archers in case they bring a catapult as well. We don't want all our archers dying in one hit. Okay, and there you have it. Uh, we want you to go mine some stone. So we got three villages on gold, three villages on stone. And now that we have stone and gold coming in, we can actually focus on building some other kinds of units like short swordsmen, we can upgrade the improved bow, and I also specifically want to build a temple, which I'm going to place right here. Uh, that looks good. I'm going to build a temple right there. And we can start doing some upgrades. Let's do the archer upgrade there. Bring our short swordsman up. Oh, look at the bodies. <laughs> we really did a number on that. Now, can we actually see something? I think their defenses are gonna be pretty uh, scary as we go from place to place. Just gotta make sure we don't overstep our bounds. Can we reach that from here? Yes, we can. And we gotta build more houses. Build a house there. And we're gonna upgrade to the composite bow. And can we afford this? Armor upgrade there. And because we outrange their archers, we can do that. Fantastic. All right, so now I'm just gonna build up my army and uh, well, I'm gonna show you how all this, well, we're gonna well, build up an army and wait until we can actually Gotta be careful with these. Yeah, I'm gonna build up an army and get a priest to heal up my soldiers. And then we're gonna move out. All right, so let's skip ahead to that. All right, so we're back into the game and look at this army. And I got this priest here, just getting him to heal up everyone. There we go. And we've got these composite bowmans, which we've upgraded pretty well. We haven't gotten to the Iron Age, but that will take quite a bit of gold. So I shifted people onto gold. I don't think that's enough gold around there, though. We might have to scout around to see if there's any more, because we've kind of spent it. But we're gonna keep, uh, let's see, let's grab all of these, not you. And the catapults will be on two. So I'll send the catapults forward and grab those guys because the catapults have the longest vision range and I'll keep these guys close behind. So when we see a tower like that, we immediately attack it and back these guys up with our troops. All right, and I don't think it's gonna take much to get through all this. All right, now let's keep moving. 
I got a prep to press D, by the way, and it seems like if I set them on a defensive stance, or the stand ground, the catapults do not fire. Attack that guy, please. Now, these composite bowmen have 7 plus 2 range. Their range is really long. There we go. And we're just gonna slowly march our way up. And actually, if we encounter... Oh, there we go, a barracks. Let's take care of that. Now, are our troops safe? With the catapults shooting into that building. I think they are. I think the area of effect is just about the size of that building. Yeah. And they still got clubmen. <laughs> oh, let's, let's back out here. We'll grab you. Composite Bowman, take care of that guy. And you guys, the catapults. Deal with that. Just got to get in, in sight range here. Just a bit north. And there we go. And you guys... Take care of this. They're going for our uh, catapults, but it's okay. And there we go. I think their base is pretty much... up there somewhere. Deal with this guy, please. Now, will our troops get hit if they're at melee range with this thing? No, they don't. Okay. Kill that guy. And all of you, start marching up here. I think we've got a sizable enough force here, which is gonna be fine. And we should get these farms back. Not gonna be too organized anymore. There we go. No, no, no. Careful about that. You guys go attack that. And keep these guys back. We're gonna take things slow. Oh, there's their town center. Why does it look like they're still in the Stone Age? Look how long the composite bowman's range is. All right, let's take out this market real quick. Is that Composite Bowman actually shooting the Sentry Tower? I think it is. <laughs> let's deal with that. And now let's deal with that. Let's take out this tower. No, no, don't shoot that. I want to wipe these guys out. Then you go attack that. We'll back these guys off. Look like looks like they have some sort of primitive uh, base here. And we'll take out that town center just to make sure they stay down. All right, fantastic. So. Wow, we actually completely took out all these trees. So I'm just gonna go ahead and build that. And we completely mined out the gold as well. Not enough gold to get to the next age, it seems. I don't think there's any more around here. Just do a quick check. If there's no more gold, then we're gonna be okay. Oh, careful where you're shooting that. All right. We're gonna leave all those houses. We're gonna keep going up the hill. We're here to destroy one specific building. 
And yeah, it doesn't seem like there's any gold. So I'm just going to send these villagers out to scout, see what we can find. There's a lot of stone, but we don't need any stone. Alright, let's take care of that. Alright. The last few defensive buildings should be up here. Our catapults are really much more effective at dealing with this stuff. Oh, no, careful. So we want the catapults to go over there. Infantry to deal with this. Got to deal with that archer. Alright, infantry stay out here while we clear out that tower. It must be, the government center must be inside that wall. Have we actually found anything interesting over here? Oh, there is actually a, more gold deposits over here. Just to be pro about this. Let's go ahead and drop that down there. Oh, there's a lot of gold over here. That's fine then. Uh, but we don't actually need it. I think we're, we're good to go. Can we bust through this wall, please? Come on. Wow, the infantry and archers practically do nothing to walls and defensive structures. Alright, where is this government center? Is that it? That's the government center. The K9 government center. Time to die. And time to be victorious in the final mission of my Age of Empires campaign. And some infantry. The pathfinding is just really weird. They just walk everywhere. I mean, I don't even know where that axeman's going, but here we go. We are victorious. Wow, a cinematic. I don't even remember that cinematic from when I was a kid. I mean, I, I think I was really bad at the game, that's why. Anyway, the historical outcome. At the height of its power, Egypt controlled all of Canaan, taking cities by diplomacy or siege as necessary. Egyptian control of Canaan was never absolute for long. However, however, the Mitanni made peace with the Egyptians around 1440 BC, temporarily strengthening Egyptian power in the region, but the Mitanni were in turn destroyed by the Hittites around 1370 BC. Ramses II fought the Hittites to draw to a draw at Kadesh in 1284 BC, and both sides backed off in their aggression. The, the gr growing power of Assyria in the east gave both reason to pause, and a peace treaty between the Egyptian and Hittites was signed in 1270. It just took them like 14 years from the draw. Copies of this remarkable document were recovered in excavations in both Egypt and Turkey. The peace of 1270 BC lasted for over 50 years, that's not very long, and marked the, the zenith of e Egypt as an ancient power. The peace was surrendered by barbarian hordes, was sundered by barbarian hordes, who, whose origin and methods remain a mystery. What is clear is that they overran the Hittite Empire, destroyed the cities of Canaan, and brought desperate war to the gates of Egypt. Although Egypt survived the onslaught, it declined thereafter and survived mainly as a possession of one of, of one empire after another. All right, let's have a look at the timeline. It actually sent us back to the Stone Age in this one, but we pretty much wiped them out. It's pretty good. Have a look at some of these stats. They still had a largest army, really? I, I maxed out. I'm pretty sure I maxed out. All the stats look good, though. 
Huh. So, that should be the end of uh, the Age of Empires Egypt campaign. I'm just going to close this out and make sure there's nothing else. Yep. Siege of Canaan, uh, Siege in Canaan is the last one in the Ascent of Egypt learning campaign. And I actually didn't realize a lot of things until the final mission, you know, in terms of upgrades and stuff like that. It took me a while to actually see those things because you have to read things really carefully. But that pretty much wraps up my, my first Age of Empires... Uh, Age of Empires 1 Let's Play, playthrough, gameplay, whatever. If you'd like to see more, let me know in the description down below. I mean, there's a lot to choose from here. There's the Rise of Rome expansions, there's the Glory of Greece, Reign of Hittites, the Voices of Babylon, Yamato, the First Punic War. So there's a lot to go through. If you want me to do another, let me know. If not, that's fine too. I just wanted to go through Age of Empires 1 once again. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the campaign, and I'll see you in the next video.